Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video, we've got another meditation. I hope you're quite enjoying this meditation series. I'm doing the meditation series. I was always going to do these in addition to my usual big reports that I do. But as you know, I'm still recovering from a bit of a health challenge and I'm not quite ready to do the big reports just as yet. They do take a fair bit of preparation and quite a lot of energy from me. So I'm not there yet, but I am improving. I'm getting so much better every single day. Your well wishes are just so amazing. Thank you so much to everybody who comments, everybody who has subscribed, everybody who puts a like or dislike or whatever on any of these videos. Thank you so much. You mean the world to me. And I can't wait to get back to doing my work. You know, I love this work so much. And I'm really uh, excited to get back into it. I am doing, well, I'm going to be doing readings again. I What I have been doing is I've been getting some emails from some of you saying, could you do a reading? Uh, yes, I, I would like to. But um, what I want to say is that please just keep checking back, you know, every few weeks or whatever. Keep checking back. Keep seeing, okay, is she back to doing you know, the, the full work that I do. I don't know when that'll be, but I do know that I will be getting back into it because I love doing this. So thank you to those of you who've asked me uh, if I can do a reading. I can, just not right now. So hang in there, keep checking back. I think my website still shows a busy signal. My website was even down for some time. So some of you, I think, tried to email me before and the emails just weren't even getting through so apologies if that was you if you've sent an email and it never got through you never got a response um that should all be working now but yeah we've got a new moon coming up and my goodness every new moon you know i think we we've got to be sending our wishes out there to the universe planting our seeds coming up with our visions of what we want and new moons are a perfect time to do that and I think during this time of this extraordinary time this very unique time of lockdown a lot of us will be reprioritizing our lives and what it is that we want and I'm already seeing that in the collective I'm already seeing so many people change their life direction and change what it is that they really want to create and what they want from life um, so a new moon time is really the best time to be formulating your vision for the future and to be planning to be putting down some concrete steps you know to really be thinking about okay what is it that I really want from life what is it that I really want to do is the job that I'm in, is it really doing it for me? Or do I need to to change direction? Do I need to um, rethink, reimagine, you know, reformulate my life? This is the brilliant time to be doing that, and especially during this Ashwini moon. This is wonderful. We've got the healing nakshatra here. And it's happening on April 23rd, 2020. We have this beautiful new moon. It's Aries, right? So we're, we're, we're starting the zodiac, right? We're, we're in Aries, number one. We're, we're beginning. We're beginning a brand new cycle. It's a very exciting time. Uh, and I really hope that wherever you are, you have a little bit of time just to indulge in visualizing what it is that you want for your life in a, in a big way. This is a really great time to be doing that. So hopefully you get some quality time, a bit of time out from wherever you are. Um, time to just switch off all, the, all your devices 
and um, tune in to to what to what you want this is a time to be thinking about what you want dreaming that up visualizing all that kind of thing planting seeds this is a really wonderful time for that i've had a little look at the astrology going forward i wanted to see is there something astrological uh, i can share before i get into the meditation and to be honest i don't have a huge amount <laughs> i was clicking through and i've just got it up on my screen now i'm just going to kind of click up through the weeks uh, an interesting thing i mean pluto is going to go into retrograde so i've got my outer planets very much switched on when does he go into retrograde he goes into retrograde uh, sort of april 26th so that's kind of interesting but what i thought was quite interesting is we're going to have all three we're going to have um, saturn jupiter and pluto retrograde we're looking at about sort of may type time for that that is kind of mid-may they're all in retrograde and that is quite interesting and i do think sort of mid-may onwards for a little while i think things are going to feel really slow i think um, progress of any kind is going to feel slow. look at that we've also got venus in retrograde as well this is really interesting so i mean if you think things are slow now i i feel like things going to get even slower if that's even possible but i mean that's really the only kind of astrological thing that i'm seeing for now and that's kind of mid-may but what maybe when i'm we're getting closer to may i might have some more thoughts and i might do a bit more um looking into all of this we have carl sapa yoga going to end when is that going to end so i've just clicked up sort of may Let's go back a bit kind of end of may so may 28 and onwards mercury is going to break that so that's great because carl sapa yoga uh, has been a player in this time in creating this time when i see carl sapa yoga in individual charts i do notice that the person who has it will have ego challenges for sure like that is one of the things that I've seen. Uh, but again, I, I probably do need to do some more study on that. But yeah, I, I don't have a huge amount to be reporting uh, astrologically. The other thing is that, you know, I think, especially for my audience, the people who are tuning into these reports, my subscribers, you know, all of us here, you know we're light workers we're quite in tune with a lot of all this stuff and i think um the best thing that we can be doing at this time is really just holding a high frequency and uh, eckhart tolle talks a lot about this talks about frequency holders and i believe i'm a frequency holder and i, I think a lot of you guys are out there as well uh, you know that we just we just hold and maintain a good calm peaceful um, optimistic and positive uh, vibe as much as possible limit our time watching the news you know just get your headlines and then get out of there kind of thing and, and if you're able to just be in a space and a place where you're remaining optimistic and you know of course this is going to um, pass and really what this is is this is an initiation it's a time of awakening and you know it's it's going to be um the frequency holders and i do believe there's heaps out there in the world i don't think it's a small number i, I mean i think you know i, I really think humanity is going to come out of this time very well i have actually been wanting to do um a little sort of mini report on bill gates i have been looking at his chart i think I'll, I'll i'll save that i'll save that for another video how about we keep this one nice and short now that i've said it that i might do a bill gates thing um i will have to deliver on that so <laughs> i might do another video uh where i look at his chart but <clears throat> he's an interesting one to look at 
at this time. And I do think that people like him are going to be tested. That is something I said in my Saturn in Capricorn video. In that one, I mentioned George Soros specifically. But it is the top 1%, even 5%. I even tend to think the top 10% of leaders and people kind of in charge of the world. Um, you know, Saturn in Capricorn. These are the people who are going to be tested. And when I look at Bill Gates's chart, well, I might as well just share very quickly with you now. Right now, he's got Saturn in a good place for him for the next 2.5 years. But after that, he enters Sadisathi. And I have a feeling that what happened to Fred the Shred, the city banker in London, I have a feeling that Saturn might, um, well, you know, Saturn's got his ways. And I feel like Saturn might be quite hard on... on um, on Bill Gates, quite possibly, um, when, when his Sadisathi comes, which isn't far away now. So that is going to be quite interesting. What else? Have I, that's all I've been looking at astrologically, really. That's kind of all I've got to report. So really, I think it's time to get into the meditation. And this meditation is, I think, going to be just a nice, fun visualization uh let's see how we're we doing for time i wanted to do a shorter video this time i had one of you say hey can you do shorter can you do a shorter meditation so i certainly will i've got this one written out as well so i'm organized today and this meditation because we're, i'll give you a little sneak peek preview some of you may stick around for it some of you may be on your way um that's fine but this meditation requires a crystal. Okay, so if you have a crystal stone, and it could be a palm stone, it could be a gem in your necklace, maybe a necklace pendant, or it may be a ring. Um, I'll tell you what I've got. I've got one in my right hand right now. I've got a palm stone. It is a beautiful angelite palm stone. Absolutely love this stone. I love it so much. It's just... I don't know, it's got this light blue kind of color. And normally I don't like light blue at all. But I love it in this stone and it's smooth and it feels so nice. And I meditate with this. And it's one of three stones that I brought with me on this Australia trip. So before leaving my apartment, I got heaps of stones. And I picked this one as my traveling stone. So it's been on me and with me the whole time. I also brought black obsidian, a black obsidian kind of bracelet type thing, and my lapis lazuli um, beaded bracelet thing, which broke. And I still don't know what the meaning of that is, but clearly I think maybe, well, I'm in Saturn Mahadasha, and lapis is a good stone for Saturn. I don't know, I, th I feel like I've, I've got a lot of Saturn energy right now, because when you begin a Mahadasha, you get, the energy of that Mahadasha really thick and strong because all your Antadashas are, you know, you got satin, 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 satin kind of thing. So yeah, so um, <laughs> the lapis lazuli broke, which is fine. I've still got it. I've still got bits of it. Some of it I've, I've lost a bit because it happened in Singapore. But anyway, um, but yeah, I've got this lovely, lovely angelite palm stone with me so this is the stone of that i'm choosing to bring into the meditation with me so you can when you sit to do this meditation or lie down or whatever it is you can hold a crystal that you love in your hand now if you don't have a crystal don't worry what i would suggest is that you visualize a tiger's eye stone of some kind so if you can visualize a tiger's eye stone if you don't know what that looks like, you can Google search it. Have a look at some of the pictures of the stone. And you can just visualize your own stone. And then when you want to tune into the energy of that stone, just close your eyes and picture it, right? You don't need to have a physical stone. Uh, but I think it helps to have. I like having physical earthly things. I like, I like stuff. So although I realize I know that you know, it's an external thing and 
one mustn't become attached to those things or that these things are pointers to what we have within. So I know all of that, but I still like having stuff. Okay, so I think that was all that I wanted to say. Make sure you got a crystal. If you don't have a crystal, visualize one. And yeah, and we're going to meet the Ashwini horses in this meditation. And it's going to be about healing. And I feel that um, it's quite good to be focused on healing and health at this time as much as possible. I think for me, even if I didn't have a health challenge, I would be using this time to create the best health I've ever had and to create the best immunity I've ever had. That's what I would be doing um, for sure. And I've been helped by this time because um, all the cafes are closed. <laughs> so for me, I'm like, oh, perfect. So I've actually quit coffee. And uh, I used to I used to love having little, you know, coffee in, in cafe each day. I'd take my astrology books and I, I was always naughty. I'd have like an almond croissant or something very buttery. And oh, gosh, I tell you what. That, that was not a good thing for me. <laughs> so I'm out of that now. I'm very super healthy. You should see my diet. It's amazing. So no caffeine, um, no meat, uh, no cheese, just really good, fresh, healthy, healthy, healthy stuff. And yeah, I'm noticing lots of health things are improving within me. So, um, you know, and that's the thing in this meditation Think about some health challenges that you want to clear or you want to get rid of, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna look to 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 get rid of those things. And if you are serious about um, healing uh, something on your own, you know, without let's say you've got chronic migraines or something like that. I'm a migraine sufferer, so I'm kind of working on that issue. I've been working on my allergies. I've been working on so in addition to my current health challenge, I'm I'm trying to sort out a whole bunch of things. Um, I figure why not but if you are interested in in this kind of pathway of, of naturally healing then I would urge you to look at the work of David Hawkins there's also Louise Hay of course um, and uh, thank you Rebecca um, the work of people like Dr Bergman John Bergman he's very good to look at as well and of course Ayurveda um, to see what kind of diet you should be eating and, and all these kinds of things so do check this stuff out but I mean of course of course if you've got anything you must consult a western medical practitioner as well which I have done all my life and, and um, I rate them so highly western medical system has saved my life on so many occasions so you know uh, I don't hesitate to to go and you know, use the Western medical system myself, except right now I'm choosing not to because what I have is not too bad and I, I can I feel like I can do it myself and I'm improving every day. So yeah, okay, let's get let's get into this. I'll stop waffling on. Um, let's get into this meditation. And I'm gonna put a bit of music uh, in the background as well. So find a space where you can relax. Close your eyes and we're going to take some time to relax the body by taking a nice deep breath in. Hold and when you're ready take a long slow deep exhale out. We're going to do that one more time. Take a nice deep breath in. Hold. And when you're ready, a nice, slow, long, gentle exhale out. Really see if you can lengthen that exhale. Make it longer, far longer than the in-breath. With your eyes closed, 
I want you to switch on your imagination because we're going to go on a journey and we're going to use our usual method of transport. We're going to imagine a white, soft, fluffy cloud. So get comfortable on your cloud and off we go. We are going on a soul journey. And because it's Ashwini Nakshatra, we're going to a place in the distant past. Okay, so we are time traveling and we're going into the past because Ketu is the Lord. So we're going to go into a past life. And you can't quite see where you're going. Things are a bit of a blur, but you feel the sensation of movement. And when you next blink, you're totally still. You find that the cloud has vanished and you find yourself in a pitch black room. And it's a strange sort of a room. It's a bit dusty and scratchy. You're not quite sure where you are, but you can see a crack of light underneath a door, kind of this light is sort of around door and you manage to open this door and now the light is flooding in and you can see that you were in a barn you, you step outside you can see okay this is a barn that I was in and it smells like a farming area you can see that there's hay in that barn And the door is opened out onto a city street. It's an ancient city with cobbled streets and small cream walled buildings are all around you. And you can't see many trees or, or much vegetation, but lots of all of these streets and cream walled buildings it's very interesting and as you walk down one of these cobbled streets you notice your clothes you're wearing a white cotton kurta pajama and you can feel that the weather is hot these streets are dusty and there's no one around no one, but then out of nowhere, two horses appear before you. Two brilliant white horses. They are magnificent. They are absolutely beautiful. And they're kind of ethereal. And they look extra white because the cream walls of these buildings are making these horses just seem supernaturally white. They're just stunning. And as you sense into these beings, you see that they're twins. They look exactly the same. And it seems that they communicate with each other telepathically and you can also get a sense that you'll be communicating with them telepathically too. And as you stand before them, you notice that they think as one. And you also know that they know you. They know who you are. And they knew that you were coming to this place. And through your mind, they say to you, look in the palm of your hand. And as you look, you see a beautiful crystal stone. It's magnificent. And they say, we are healers and we want to put our healing energy in that stone of yours. However, for this to work, we need you to communicate with us of what ails you. Tell us what we can improve and then let it go by handing it over to us 
and we'll put our healing powers in your stone. But this has to operate like an exchange. You have to give us the thing that ails you so that we can give you some of our healing energy. So you think for a moment and maybe you want to give up chronic back pain. Perhaps you get headaches often. Maybe you're low on energy. Maybe you just want to have more energy. You want to feel more alive. Or maybe this thing that you want to hand over, maybe it's something bigger that has troubled you for a while. So think about what this is that you want to really give up. You want to let it go. Think of what it is and then through your third eye, pretend you're transferring the entire energy of this ailment to these twin horses. And once you feel like you've fully done that, release the energy. Just cons consciously think, I'm releasing this. I'm handing over this entire thing to these twin horses. And now spend a few moments feeling free and clear inside, feeling like, yep, this has been done. I've done it. Feel, feel the confidence of the thought, I've done it. Very good. Well done. All right. Now the horses are putting their healing power into your stone. And they're doing that because you've really handed it over. And that's brave. That's very brave of you to to hand over this thing that has been familiar to you. Okay. We've got Ketu energy here. Ketu is familiar. And a lot of these chronic ailments and chronic illnesses and these things are familiar. Sometimes we're just playing out something old from a past life. Sometimes there's no reason or no meaning for our ailment in this life. Sometimes it very much comes from a long time ago. So the horses are putting their healing energy into your stone. So try and feel the stone in the palm of your hand. Can you feel it getting warmer? Can you feel any sensation around your hand? Try to just feel into that. Now before you go, the twin horses have a message for you for how to use this stone. So through your mind, they tell you, carry this stone with you as you feel like over the next day or over the next few days, just as often as you remember. And if you forget to carry this stone, that's a good sign. It's a good sign because it means you don't need it. But if you wish, carry it with you as often as you like. And yes, this stone does contain some of our magic powers, they say. But we mixed our healing energy with some of yours. This is just a way of putting you in touch with your own healing energy. This stone is designed to jumpstart your own healing process, a key that ignites the cure within. You have every process, every chemical, every answer, every reason, every thought, everything within you to correct your own body. You've got everything you need. You just have to believe you can do it. Believe that your body is a health creating machine and it will be so.
And as you contemplate these thoughts, you think about, wow, my body is a health creating machine. And you think about that and you think, yeah, you know what? It is. When I was a kid, I'd get a cut and it would heal by itself. And you start to put things in perspective. You start to see that, okay, I've got this ailment, but you start to see the health in your body. And that actually the health outweighs the problems. And you see that your body is a health creating machine. And as you think of all these things, you're thinking, wow, I'm more healthy than I am sick. And that feels good. And, and the healthy parts of your body are celebrating. They're going, yay, she's acknowledging us. Or yay, he's acknowledging us. Right? Feel the health in your body. As you contemplate all this, and as you look at your stone, you feel so good and, and you want to thank the horses. But when you look up, you see that they've gone. But that's okay, because in your mind, and in your heart, and in your stone, they are with you. And they know how grateful you are. They feel it. Anytime you want to talk to them, anytime you want healing, you can ask these twin horses to be there for you. So it's time to venture back. The cloud has arrived. And as you relax into that cloud, and as you come back into the room, You feel the health in your body. You feel all the things that feel good. And you feel grateful. And you feel that of course, whatever has been ailing you, you'll be able to sort it out in time. So feel free to come back into the room and open your eyes. Or of course you can drift off into sleep if you'd prefer to do that. All right, well take care everyone and I'll see you next time. <laughs>